Haha, <laughs> that looks really cute. Oh, I love it! You're listening to the Mike Cassidy Photography Podcast. It's your real world photography business masterclass with no BS and no magic shortcuts. Here's your host, Mike Cassidy. And boom goes the dynamite. Greetings. My name is Michael. And I am your neighbor. I am your neighbor. Welcome to the hoedown. What's going on, everybody? So this week, as I mentioned, I wanted to get on the second part of the interview with Arnica, and I'll get into more details about that in a moment. But first, I wanted to get to someone sent me a DM asking about how my new camera was doing, as you know, a couple episodes ago. I when I was uh, on with Trevor, we were talking about I finally made a new camera purchase after waiting and what I bought. And someone asked me, you know, my thoughts of, of my new camera and how things were working out. And uh, I don't got it yet. Yeah, apparently the Nikon Z7 Mark IIs are not even shipping. There's all kinds of supply constraints and stuff going on there. So I have been like on back order now for. Uh, I don't know, almost two months. I don't remember when I ordered that. Mid-December? I know, it was before Christmas. Sometime around there, so nothing has shipped. Yeah, I wanted to get some uh, lenses for that, and I don't use a lot of lenses. There's a 51.2, can't get it. Even the 51.8, can't get it. A lot of lenses you can't even uh, buy. They're all, like, on permanent back order, apparently, with no... ETA date, so it's a slow go in 2021 getting new camera gear, so that's the latest on that and as soon as something happens there I'll, I'll let you know and today though we're getting into the second part of the interview with Arnica and her five phases business planner outline that she uh, uh, was talking about last week and this week we really get into the meat and potatoes of the subject category by category and you know From all the phases, from learning, you know, building the portfolio and building the business and ongoing business maintenance and even to some advanced uh, topics such as business growth and development to take yourself to the next level once you have mastered all the previous steps. So we get into detail here. And if you want to follow along at home, you can download the business planner. Um, The links are down in the podcast notes below. And you can always get the de- information by visiting Arnica's website, and that is the Natural Light Portrait Studio.com, where you can find more information about her courses and so sign up. Arnica knows what she's talking about, as you can see. So I'm not going to talk too long today. Wanted to get into this episode and uh, think this is a good one. Uh, you'll enjoy this information, and it's really a lot to absorb. So take some notes. Hope you learned something. And as always, if you need to reach out to me, you know, I enjoy hearing from you. Uh, You can connect with me online on Instagram at Mike Cassidy Podcast or via my email, Mike at the Photography Podcast dot show. If you feel like reaching out to me and thanks so much for listening and I'll talk to you again soon. This podcast and my website both focus on the goal of translating the art and business of photography and making it accessible and understandable to everyone. My goal is to provide the best content in photography for you, the listener. I've assembled a great team of photography guests and experts to make this happen. What I've chosen to do is create a subscriber model for my audience. If you value what I'm doing, you can become a member and support the show. In exchange, you'll receive benefits over and above what's available for free. The membership program includes episodes with complete, unabridged interviews with our guests, early episode access, participation in AMA episodes, and there's more. 
If you'd like to learn more now, head over to the photography podcast show forward slash subscribe. Now, without further delay, here's today's episode. One of the most important things, this is step one. Step one. And this, this makes a lot of sense. And we're not going to bore people and go through every single one of these in, in like so much detail, but this is the number one thing and the number one, I think, point of failure. And we had talked about this earlier where, and I've used this example before, where have Debbie and Debbie was a cupcake maker at home. She had her home cupcake business and her strawberry kale cupcakes. No one wanted to buy them. So Debbie got very angry because no one would buy her cupcakes. And then she took a photo one day and posted it on Facebook. And her friends were like, wow, you should be a photographer. <laughs> you know, so, and then Debbie, you think? And she goes out and sends all her kitchen stand mixer equipment, buys a camera, gets a website. And the next thing, Debbie is a pro boudoir photographer. Just like two weeks later, never having touched a camera in her life, but on this reinforcement or encouragement from her friend, now she is, and she's going to be changing lives. That's more important than anything else. I'm changing lives. That's all that matters. Arnica, don't try to stop me, but that's not really enough. No, it's not. Especially when you're dealing with something like boudoir, especially. I, I always tell people, you need to learn how to photograph women with their clothes on before you photograph women with their clothes off. Because there are you, it's so important, not only just for boudoir photography. And um, I think, you know, boudoir is a specific niche, not every portrait photographer. And I deal with like people that are photographing people in general, not just boudoir, but I happen to specialize in boudoir. So right. um, really learning how to light them, learning how to pose them, learning how to edit them. Like these are three very, very critical components to producing a good image of a person that is, that is going to change her life, right. that is going to give, you know, boost her self-esteem and to give her, um, you know, a different, shed some different light on the body that she lives in because we're very, very critical of ourselves. And I don't even want to make this so specific just to boudoir because these tips are these are just any kind of photography business. But number A, number one on your list is camera basics. Camera basics. In this learning phase, camera. And so many people, you know, like you said, and it it's so different whether you're inside, whether you're outside, whether you have like tungsten lighting or this lighting, learning how to operate a camera in, in all these conditions and light or dark and, and, and change things is, is the A. And that takes some time. It, does. it takes time. And I remember when one of my very, very best friends, she's an incredible photographer. Um, I remember when I met her and, and this was in like 2010, she was already very successful at weddings um, and she's still a wedding photographer. She said, I remember asking her like, what, what aperture did you shoot that on? And she like literally didn't know what that was. I was like, how are you producing the quality of work that you're producing without knowing what that means. And she did a, a lot of learning over the next course of the next two years. And her work is like so phenomenal. And it just goes to show you like, once you understand the tools, you can get by with kind of just being like, yeah, I think this when I turn this dial, it kind of looks the way that I look. Mm -hmm. But once you really understand and you don't have to think about it anymore, that's when you can really focus on creating art because you can't focus on creating art and creating beautiful images of somebody if you're worried about what shutter speed you're on or if you're worried about, you know, what aperture you're shooting at. If there's such a, um, there's a balance that needs to happen there. And I always compare it to like, we always get our best ideas in the shower because you're, you're not having to think about what to do in the shower. You, you just get in, you turn the water on, you put it on the temperature you want, you wash your hair. And by the time you get out, you've had a million ideas and you didn't at one point think about what you needed to do, with how you wash your hair because it's built in, it's automatic. Yet you, your mind was able to think about all of these other things while you were taking a shower. And that's the same way that a photography shoot should end up being I'm thinking about what, do, you know, what, how do I want the lighting to fall on my subject? How do I want to portray her? What do I want her attitude to come across? In her? All right. The last thing you want to be is worried about your camera and fuddling with that while someone's in, in, someone's in front of you. You have to get that down and learn how to operate that so you can focus on the business at hand. Exactly. Is what it comes down to. Exactly. Yeah. So, so, it's so, so many people don't, they just don't do that. Right. 
and and it just it's just like so confusing to me and you know people that don't want to get involved in in learning that and you're right lighting if you're working indoor or outdoor that takes time to to learn how to how to do that as well you especially for someone like you who's working inside you got to know how to operate those lights right, exactly and i shoot a combo of natural light and strobe so it's also like okay do i want to shoot this natural light do i want to shoot strobe do i want to and what's motivating my choice that's really you know right. key and if you are working with women again or kids or who are posing is is important, you know, I think that people make a bit too much of that. Like I'm an expert poser, but you do have to know because like we mentioned, there are people of all different sizes, shapes, and, and something is flattering to one is is not flattering to the other. And you never know who's going to come walking through that door. So you got to be prepared. Okay, it's true. Sure. You, know? you got to know. <laughs> yeah. You, you got to know, like, because certain body parts, you can't do all uh, kind of, you have to have, you know, certain things that work with certain body types. And, and so learning that whole, and that takes a while. That took me a long, I always struggled, you know, with that. And I think that's a little bit more difficult than, than people think. And, and I would always worry that if someone, see, I don't even know what you could say anymore. Was this a certain body type? I would always, Ooh, are they going to be happy with this? You know? And, and, uh, I always, it's, it's, it's hard. So learning how to work with all different body styles. And I think that takes time and it takes experience too. I don't think you can read that in a PDF and learn yeah. it. You know, you got to go through. There's little things that you can do understanding the different body mm -hmm. shapes, like understand, like some women carry a lot of weight in their belly, but their legs are thin. Some women carry a lot of weight in their butt and their hips and their thighs, but their stomach is flat as a board. So, you know, like it's like little things understanding. Okay. And the way I look at posing and stuff and, and body shape and body weight is always going back to the hourglass, like making sure that we're seeing that proportion because it's the proportion, you know, it's like that hourglass shape. That is what makes it sexy because that's what makes it different than a man. And it's right. the difference that makes it desirable. Right. And so learning how to create that shape in different styles, it, it takes time. And you're right. And this is as far as this phase one learning, I think you got to have a good handle on that before you start bringing people in Definitely. and giving them a lot of disappointing um, you know, results. It, it's true. It, it, like I told you, I see it all the time and it just makes me scratch my head. The things that, that, that they release these photos into the universe and then workflow and editing is another item on this list of course, because once you wind up with all these pictures, you know, and you could test to me, sit here at my desk for hours every single day and you got to figure out how to get through all that and, and not have it consume your life. Absolutely. And just having a good, like, okay, what's saved onto my external hard drive so that I don't my mm -hmm. system down. What what programs do I want to use? Personally, I teach a Adobe Lightroom to Photoshop workflow. How do we use those in conjunction with each other? How do we edit in a way that is um, appealing but not over edited? We want people to look like people and not look like soft aliens. You know. Yeah, well, we don't want any. We don't want any alien green eyes. No. We don't want any no. stuff. Like that. So that's, yeah. And the basic camera basics, workflow, studio setup, lighting, posing. These are like the fundamental things. Like fundamentals. Yep. And it's not something you're going to learn in a week. No, absolutely. You know, I mean, dependent on your situation, some people can learn it faster than others. For certain, you might already have some sort of foundation where you already kind of know how your photography works. So if you have that, you then now it's time to start building a yeah. Right, right, right. You may have been taking a bunch of photos and so you can, right. you know, and I, I think that's super smart getting a handle on all of those things. You may not have to be an expert right. yeah. on every single and one I of those. I don't even consider myself an expert, <laughs> you know. Right. And, and nor do I. Right. I don't even know what the hell I'm right. doing. Sometimes I don't even know how to get these pictures come out. But yeah, you have to know. And like you said, that in, in the camera, and if like someone like me who works inside, is, it's very different than when you go to take a picture of, of, of somebody outside or, or in, in the sun. Or any, so if you're, you know, you learned your one thing, I think you still need to know inside, outside, all these different things. And learning a camera, I think that's so overlooked and, and people just need to take a basic camera class or something and learn how all these, because if you're right, if you don't know what the, if you're leaving on the auto it's not going to work for you in a lot of situations. You have to manually adjust for your, for your, for your setting. And so once we do that, I'm a tired already. Arnica. I will I've to, all this learning on phase one. Now phase two <laughs> on your, that's, that would be, I would drop out right there. Phase one, phase two, I give up. Phase two is 
is is tricky again for some, like especially in boudoir. I think it's tricky to start to build a port portfolio. But phase two on yours is, is portfolio building. And there's a couple of bullet points you have on here. And you touched kind of earlier on this. And I think vouchers or giving things away, like you mentioned with your wedding um, bridal show, is a way to get some people in to start working on them. Uh, first. So what's your experience with vouchers or how do, how do people do that differently? How, how do you operate using like a voucher system? Well, I think it's really, and and you had mentioned this earlier as well, like don't charge people for something that you really don't have any skill at yet. You know, you have to have a way to sort of build up. You have to have a way to practice. So using gift vouchers or using a giveaway of some sort is a really great way to do this because this comes, what happens is exactly what I did with the boudoir in that you can do the shoot. And then if people like the images, they can buy them. If they don't like the images, they don't have to buy them. There's no commitment yet. You're still getting something out of it. You're still getting an education. You're still building a portfolio. You're getting images to put on Instagram, to put on Facebook, to put on your website. So utilizing that, you know, that um, plan of I'm going to do a shoot for you. Here's a gift certificate for a shoot so that people understand that it's you are working. It's, this isn't something that you will be doing for free for the rest of your life but they understand that there's a value behind what you're offering. And a lot of it is not even just that they understand it so that you understand too, because so much of being a business owner and a photographer is also shifting your own mindset. Like, okay, this service that I'm going to give somebody is $350. I'm giving them a gift certificate. So that covers that $350. And so I need to deliver $350 worth of products to them or, or service to them. So however you choose to do that, I mean, you know, I have a really beautiful gift card that I, cause I still use gift vouchers every now and then. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, I used to use them like more so years ago yeah, and me too. everybody does it a little differently and it's, it's changed now because one of the struggles and maybe not so much with portrait and stuff with, with boudoir building a portfolio because Nah, it's tricky. It's just tricky getting people to at first to let them use your photos because not everybody wants their their pictures like sort of out there. And then um, what I used to have were these and, and nice. I they were like shiny, and I had an envelope I would put them in. And let's say I was out at a restaurant and I was eating dinner, and I had a server who would just gave me great service or someone that it would be interested to photograph. And I would keep these five by seven. I still have them over there somewhere right down there. And it would say something like, this is a gift for you to come in. And, and I, w- I would break it down with, with value. It would still say you were entitled to a free session with me and X number of dollars of products. And I would fill it in $300. The total value of this is $900 worth of products and 300. So they can see there's a tangible, you're giving somebody $1,100 worth of stuff. Right. And um, not everybody's going to going to bring those in, but if you make some gift vouchers, and maybe we'll make an example or something, I'll I'll put down there, and and there you can keep them with you if you run across somebody that when you're out somewhere, you can you give them give them a voucher, and and the idea is you have to have that agreement though that if these people are coming in, they're going to allow to use some or, or 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 some of these photos, and so in turn you can give this people this service in exchange for getting some photos of them that you can use to start to build your. Um, build your your portfolio because unless you have a bunch of friends who are willing to come in, you know you have to start to to seek these because it's like that recurring thing, especially with glamour photography. No one's going to want to come and see you if they don't see some great photos. And how do you get great photos if no one, you know, um, if you can't if you can't photograph anybody? So that's a struggle, I think, for a lot of people starting off in glamour is is getting that. So I I think that's an important thing is having that like voucher system. And there's lots of ways to do it. I'm sure you could search on on Google and find different ways, but having some kind of a voucher and giving away, and you're right, as long as you put like a value on that. And so you don't feel like you're giving something away for, for free. People are more apt to, because if someone gives me something and it's worth nothing, right. you know, I don't know. We'll no for, they're, they're more 1200 bucks. You may, they may pay uh, a little bit more attention. The other thing about that too, is like nowadays with social media, I, like I hear people say too, like, Oh, I can't find anybody to photograph or I can't find anybody to build a portfolio. I'm mm. like, that is the biggest pile of crap I've ever heard because with social media and everybody wants photos of themselves, like there's not going to be, 
you might have one or two people that say, no, I'm not interested, but it's not going to be hard to find somebody that Mm -hmm. will let you take some photos of them in exchange for, you know, them having like access to beautiful photos. Yeah. Yeah. And so that, that's important. That's a built, that's a building block as far as, as gift. And we're talking about the portfolio building here. And then as far as makeup artists, you know, um, that could be tricky for some people too. finding what are, what's your experience with that? And, and why is that part of your, your list as, as makeup artists there and, and portfolio because, building? So here's the deal with makeup artists. Like in order to offer a service, like the service that I want to be able to offer my clients in order to offer them. So I think my average sales like $2,900 or $3,000 right now. So in order for me to offer that kind of service, which you might not start there, but ideally we want to get you there. Right. Um, you, it, you need to offer a full service. It's like, if I go to right. Land Rover and I'm going to spend $80,000 on a new Range Rover, I sure as hell expect to sit on leather couches and drink champagne while I'm waiting for the guy to like draw up my contract. Mm, you know, yeah. I don't expect that if I am going to buy a Prius, I do expect that if I'm going to buy a Range Rover. So it's kind of the same principle. The other thing is that with a makeup artist, so my makeup artist really helps me a lot during the shoot. She's my assistant. Oh yeah. Um, They're very important. Um, and it allows me to change my, change my client's hair and makeup as we go through the shoot. I want her to start off something that is maybe a little bit more her. So if she doesn't wear a lot of makeup naturally, we'll start with a little something a little more natural, just like nice skin, some lashes, some lip color. And then we can build to that throughout the shoot. The other thing is, is that in reality, having a good makeup artist saves me a whole lot of retouching time. Yeah. Oh, you're right. If I have to go in and put makeup on people or, you know, like pluck their eyebrows in Photoshop, which yes, it's a thing, or make their hair better or deal with like, you know, gaps in hair or greasy hair or stuff like that. It saves time. So much time. time. It's so worth that $150 for me to pay my makeup artist. Right. So I want Coming you to in too. Uh, learn how to do that. It's going to elevate the value of what you offer. And I want you to learn how to do that from the get go. So, right. And it, that's a, it, you're right. It's part of the experience, but only that you're the makeup artist too. They are like your frontline employees 100%. that what's going on. Am I going to be okay in here? So they're really that calming force. The, you're the first people that are often met when they when they come in. So it's very important on in that aspect too to get in there and have it. And finding, I think it's make There's a lot of makeup artists out there. So again, you can go to Instagram and usually whatever your state is, PA makeup artist, NY makeup artist, and or even on the on the city level. And um, usually it's not too hard to find to find people to come in. But, yeah, that's important. And-, and I always teach people to use their makeup artist as one of their portfolio building shoots because your makeup artist already knows how to do their own hair and makeup. And you can it's something that you can give to them that allows them to sort of create a relationship with you so that you've got this mutual beneficial relationship. And I use my makeup artist. I mean, this is like a whole nother topic, but I use my makeup artist a lot in terms of getting clients in the door. So my makeup artist and I have built into one of her wedding packages because she does full-time hair makeup. Yeah, most do. She does. You know, we built it into one of her packages that her clients get a shoot with me. And then I pay my makeup artist to do the shoot, my $150 that I pay her. And mm. it's like an automatic client in the door. So that's kind of another, that's like a roundabout gift voucher. The, the bride doesn't pay anything for the shoot. She purchases her photos on the end. And I mean, 50% of my shoots come from my makeup artist. Yeah. It's a bill. No, that's a good, yeah, that's, that's a good, I do the exact same thing. And I have vouchers that I give them is that you are entitled either to a discount or a free shoot or, or X number of people off and do not underestimate makeup artists as a good resource because they're doing weddings 300 and 306. That doesn't make sense. 52 weekends a, a year. Generally, they're out Friday, Saturday, Sunday doing. And so if you work with brides at brides or near brides, that's that's a good tip. You definitely want to use that resource and right building that relationship. If they can say, 
oh, Arnica did a great job with me. Here are my photo. I would highly recommend it. That glowing endorsement is just having that work, that work, uh, you know, for you. And then as far as legal portfolio building, you have on here legal foundations. Just briefly, what's as, as far as legal, what do we need to do when we're, when we're getting going? There's there? just a few things that kind of need to come into place before you actually start photographing people. Um, you need to have a model release and you can get, there are so many model release, um, you know, templates and things out there. Basically all that is saying is just that you, this person is allowing you, the photographer to photograph them. And that it's really, really important to have that just because you, especially if you're doing boudoir, please, please, mm. please do not photograph anybody with boudoir without, without permission. Their written yeah, consent. Yeah, and don't assume that they understood right. that that's what, yeah, they should be, whether when you're signing them up. And now, and a lot of like the CRM software, you know, if you're using HoneyBook or Tave or whatever, you can have that uh, right in the, in when the people sign and they could absolutely. be yep. uh, doing that right built into that. Yeah. And you have a note on here to do, start off with about 10 of these shoots yeah. when you're going, get 10 solid ones yeah. in the books right away. And so you have a variety. Exactly. I, I say to do 10 because after 10, you're going to start to figure out, well, I really liked shooting the maternity or I really liked doing the boudoir or I, re you know, whatever it is. And, and when I say to do 10 folio building shoots, I don't say just do 10 boudoir shoots. You can, if you want to, if like you are having your head, like, I know this is what I want to do. But this is the direction I'm going for. Um, but I say to like, do a variety, do, you know, 10 or do a maternity shoot, do a baby shoot, do a mom and a baby shoot, do um, a personal branding shoot, do a boudoir shoot. You know, there's a variety of shoots that you can do. Cause you don't know what right. my click. Don't know. Yeah. And to be honest with you, like I, I don't shoot babies in baskets. Like I love babies. I, I, I do. I love babies. I have babies, like, but I'm not good at it. It just never clicks. I mm -hmm. shoot moms and babies together, but I'm not, but not in the basket. that you're going to go to, to do like the baby in the basket. Like it's just not my jam. I'm not good at it, but that I tried it and it didn't work for, you know, like, and then, you know, no, and then you don't, exactly. you, know, you just, you move on. Exactly. From, the other thing with the 10 shoots is you have to have something that you're going to build your website off of. You know, and 10 is kind of a good number. I would rather, I tell the people that I mentor this all the time, I would way rather see, have you um, go to your website and see like 10 really awesome shots than 55 sort of bad shots, you know? Yeah, yeah. So the quantity isn't as important as having, because exactly. remember, these are, you're, this is your storefront. You know, you want to have high quality. It doesn't matter if you have 200 photos in there. If they're all bad, it's uh, they're not going to help you out. Trust yep. me. Don't do that. Exactly. Don't do exactly. it. And then on phase three of yours is business molding. So I guess that means you kind of know what you're going to do. You're just getting started. And at this is the point where you want to start to make some refinement and, and tightening things up and really starting to come into your own yep. identity. I guess that's what you mean yep. by, by sort of molding there. And you have base building business basics, technology, branding, website, and pricing and so forth. You mean I shouldn't spend 36 straight hours before I even know what I'm doing, working on my pricing that comes, that comes later. Precisely. Who would have, who would have, like, who would have let's thought? Let's not worry about your pricing until you've, you've figured out how to take a picture. Yeah, I, I shouldn't go nuts on my right. logo. No, see, these are, yeah, this is, this is right. So once you, I guess you have your camera basics and, and you have your, and you decide, all right, this is I'm going to start to maybe take a few customers and, and going these things really come down the line. I think a lot of people want to attack this up front. Like they're so concerned about their right. logo. It doesn't matter. And your logo Learn nothing. what you're doing first. Yep. Your logo sells you know, nothing. Then, um, so I really, the first phase one, and it makes me laugh. Like when I look through this, when I really sat down to kind of hash this all out, I literally like, rented a cabin in the woods and spent three days and was like, okay, what does this actually look like going back through my business over the years? What is this act? You know, what are the steps? What are the, what's the process? And the, it's like phase one and phase two are kind of your actual hands-on camera. I'm going to learn how to take it. Learning. Yeah. The educational. Right. Phase three, it. phase four, and phase five are all business. It's all business. Like, when I look through my my work, 
I spend like 2% with an actual camera in my hand. The rest of the time I'm working on my business Mm -hmm. is me on social media. It's me on my website. It's me editing. It's me dealing with my bank accounts. It's me masterminding how to make more money, how to get more clients. You know, it's not with a camera in my hand. So um, doing kind of those business basics is really starting to, okay, how do I lay a foundation so that I'm not, so that I'm actually running this as a business and not as a hobby, you know? Right. These are important things, like you said, and, and at this point you can start to develop your, your branding because, you know, and that's a lot more than a logo. We're not going down that path today as as far as the the details Mm -hmm. in in branding and developing your, your website. And this is another important thing. And opinions vary on this. I'm on the side that says, yeah, you you need to invest in your website, especially if you're doing something higher end, it needs to look that way, you know, so you got to go out and get a web guy or a web designer. And if you are going to be in business and you're going to be a higher end, whatever it is, baby photographer, glamour photographer, your website has to look the part yeah. that that's because, you know, calling yourself a, a high end photographer or like a fine art photographer again, and I'm going to curse having shitty photos on your website is incongruous with sort of, yep. you know, that idea. So these things all need to be in alignment. So that makes a ton of sense there. And then products and pricing, um, you know, not to get into this, this too deeply, but you said, you know, we've got the, the technical part and, you know, we're, we're just getting started or getting our website together and doing this. You do have to sit down at some part and say, you know, how am I going to, how am I going to work this now? Everybody, again, there isn't one right answer to this, I, I think. And so where do you come down when you're starting with somebody new, are you telling someone to, to start high price right away? Or you or some people prefer to work their, their sort of way up? Or what's your approach a little bit there when it comes to the product offerings and where to start out mm-hmm. price wise? Well, I think that the very first thing is that you kind of have to decide what you what it is that you want to offer. And generally, I tell people like, if you were the client, what would you want to buy? You know, if, and I look at that when I offer my own products, what do you want to buy? So then from there, we have obvious, um, like things to consider. We need to consider however, whatever product you want to offer, we need to figure out, okay, well, how much does that cost you? And so for me, the products and pricing is, there's actually a scientific formula to this. It's not just a like, well, I think I'm going to charge $2,500 or I think I'm going to charge $500. What we, what I do and what my goal is to get people to do is to sit down. We need to figure out how much does your life cost you? Like not your business. Right. How much is it going to cost you to live? How much is yeah. it going to cost you to live? So do you have kids? Do you have a mortgage? Do you have a car right. payment? Do you have income? It's like, right. what are your monthly bills? So how much money do you need to make? Then how much mis- uh, money does the business need to make? Do you want to have a studio? You know, do you want to hire makeup artists? Like what quality of service do you want to offer? Plus how, what's your cost of goods? So how much does the actual product cost? If you're going to offer an album, you know, does the album cost $55 that you want to sell? Does the album cost $155? Then when you actually sit down and you lay all that out, that kind of gives you how much to charge. And this is what literally every photographer that I ever know, we always do it backwards. We're like, well, maybe I'll charge $500. I don't know. I'm comfortable with that. They just pick a number. Well, that's because what Bob down the road charge or Nancy charges or, you know, and they, people do it exactly. They don't understand it's formulaic. You know, if you want to make, you know, 50 grand a year, 60s, you ain't doing it, giving somebody a CD for $35, you know? And so working backwards like that is exactly how you have to do that. And, um, you know, figure out where you want to be and how many people you want to, you want to work with. So it's a, there's a whole system to that. And as far as, um, you know, like, um, branding and so forth, uh, what are your thoughts on where do you need to start there or, or a good starting point for people on the brand? So front? we are, you know, we have it so easy now compared to like when you and I started, <laughs> I remember, mm. you know, when I started, I literally built my website with a program called Dreamweaver. Like I did code yeah. and I built the website. Teach yourself. Yeah, I did the same thing. You taught yourself how to write HTML. Exactly. And you made like some. Yeah, I looked at yeah, that yeah. now compared to like what we, you know, I can whip out a website for somebody in an afternoon if I needed to. And it's like amazing. So we, we have so many tools at our fingertips. 
I, what we, what I suggest people do is get on Pinterest and I want them to create a board of fonts and colors that, that they love from different brands. Like, are you an Abercrombie kind of person? Are you a Ralph Lauren kind of person? You know, like what are you drawn to? What colors and things? And when you create that mood board, that's going to then help you to come in and say, okay, these fonts all look fairly consistent. These colors are fairly consistent. And then you can go into a program like Photoshop. If you have any design skills, you can get on Etsy and just buy a logo that's similar to what you like. You can get on Canva and there's like a million, you know, yeah, you could do this all yourself. It takes time to put all that together. But yeah, yep. but get feedback from people too. That's like my biggest thing. I happen to be good at design as well. So, you know, that part of it has come easy for me. But definitely when I'm mentoring people and when I'm working with people one-on-one, we always go through their stuff and I tell them, if you want to offer a $3,000 you know, photo shoot, we need to up your brand a little bit. So I will give them honest feedback and say, we got to raise the bar here in terms of your branding. Um, or sometimes people just like, they don't have a problem with it. Like they have a good design sense. And You've been listening to the free version of the Mike Cassidy Photography Podcast, which brings you the smartest content in photography. If you value what you've been hearing, Mike has created a membership program that brings you far more in-depth content if you want to take your knowledge of the business of photography to the next level. To hear the full interviews with all of Mike's guests, become a premium member today by visiting the photographypodcast.show forward slash subscribe. And they can do it on their own. Yeah. Yeah. And then you don't have to do do our branding company. Yeah. You know, it's going to cost you 25, 35, 45 hundred bucks and people will put all this stuff together for you and say, here's what we got, you know, but a lot of people starting off, they just don't have money to, to do that. So it's important to, to let the people can do this themselves. They can little by little put, and you don't have to do it in one night. You know, you can start to put all this together to build a cohesive the other thing for, that I like to remind people. people of, too, is like you have a very valuable skill. You can always trade with people, it's probably yeah. a graphic designer yeah. or a branding company that needs some photos. And so remember that you have a very, very valuable skill that a lot of people want and need at this mm. point in time. So you say, OK, you do my branding. I'll do your your branding. Right. Yeah. Good tip. And that absolutely will work for you too. find some people in your area that want to do a little trade and send them a note, you know, say, Hey, my name is so-and-so and I'm, and, and, and build that relationship with those, those people. That certainly is good. And step four is business maintenance. And this is a big part of what you're doing all the time is just maintaining, keeping things going, keeping things, you know, your business practices and how you, how you do everything. You have as part of this, you know, client workflow, which is important. You got to walk people through or get them through your whole session. List building, which we'll touch on, you know, your your practices. I guess you mean, you know, what you're going to allow people to do and what you're not, how you're going to operate your business, conversations, marketing, and 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 your systems. There's a lot. This is a there's a lot going on. This is a whole show in itself. This 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 and I won't get too deep into these. <laughs> but you know, yeah, this will be like would well, this will be like a six hour show we can go through not all idea, Mike. this stuff. I can't hold my bladder that long, Arnie. I don't know about you, but we would definitely need a break. Um, but client work and list building is important. I'll just start with that one. And that just means starting to build a, a right, a customer, getting emails and 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 starting to work and, and build a, a customer. Absolutely. And I, to be honest with you, I didn't really even understand this until like two years ago, like not very long ago. So the importance of building your list, and that basically just means compiling an email list of potential clients or people that might be in the future interested in the service you have to offer. And here's the thing. Um, I see this all the time. Like this just came up on my Facebook. One of the girls that I knew um, that I've done a lot of work for, she was like, Instagram just shut down my account because they didn't like what I was saying. So yeah. if you no longer had social media, how would you communicate with the people, with your potential clients? You know, because we take social media for granted now, but 
Not yours. Right. Yeah. Um, but email is still the highest converting uh, marketing done online because it mm. comes directly to you. There's no distractions. I can hear a podcast and I'll tell you, like, this is a perfect example. So if somebody's listening to this podcast right now and they're like, oh, cool, I might, you know, I might want to like go and sign up for her, for her um, education community. Well, if they're just listening to the podcast, they might want to do it, but then they have to actually sit down, go Google me, find my education site. Whereas if they're on my email list, it comes directly to them. All they have to do is get the link and sign up. So email is still the highest converting marketing resource that we have. And if you can use your email marketing for holiday shoots, for um, like if you're a person that does like maternity, baby, mom and baby at six months, one year shoot, you know, that's like the ideal situation to have email following up, following right. up, right. Yeah. People, and keeping you at the top of people's minds. And all you got to do, it's a simple, like on my, the, the, the busiest pages on my website are my galleries. And when people go to one of those pages, it's a little box. I think that pops up that says, like what you see. You may not be ready now, but you stay in touch and the people will put their, their email address in. And then, you know, they may, and the one thing, especially with, I know with beauty, they may be checking you out six months, a year, even before they're, they're, they're right. ready to go. So that lets you reach out to these people. And then you all the time I have people, you know, I was on your website about a year ago and I'm finally ready now to come in. So you can start to, to, to build people a simple little pop-up or a little email fill in box on your, on your website somewhere. And if you can't do it, have your designer put it on there on one of your pages or a little pop-up and that's all you got to do. That's all you got to do. And having people. a freebie is a good way to build that list. Too. Yeah. Yeah. Like people, a lot of will give away a list. I had a step on how to prepare shoot. for this. Give, a, you know, yeah. give 10 free Christmas cards for your mini session. You know, like having something that people can, that people actually get in exchange for giving you their email right. address. Right. See, I'm so good. I don't have to do that. Yeah, good Lord. <laughs> <laughs> That's a joke. No, but yeah, a lot of people, right. Uh, they'll give, they'll give away a free ebook or something in exchange for that. And that's perfectly okay way to go ahead and, and, and do that um, as well. And marketing you have on here in this steps too. like, so what are some basics that you have uh, that you on, on the marketing front for, for people yeah, there? So marketing is really, I think people need to find kind of like their superpower in marketing some people are really, really great marketers online. They're totally comfortable doing lives. They're totally comfortable doing Facebook ads. They're totally comfortable doing, getting out you know, there, doing yeah. kind of all like working in this online space. Other people are not comfortable with that at all. Or maybe they're not tech savvy or maybe that's just not, they don't want to spend their time in front of the computer. So their strength is right. much more in relational marketing. And so they're going to get a lot of their clientele from doing, you know, in-person events, doing like the women's night, you know, and build those relationships right. there, or they have relationships with um, aesthetics companies. They have really, you know, and, right. and so their clientele is coming from there. So I definitely encourage people like, okay, figure out, you know, do you want to do one or the other or both? I do both. Um mm. But I'm more relational than I am online. I'm I'm forcing myself to do to get on there right yeah. now, um, and that goes back to my thing about <laughs> not wanting to be on camera and stuff. But I, you know, so you need to figure out what side you're, of the coin you're on, and how do we really push your marketing efforts in that direction if that's what you prefer. Right, and you got to do something. And marketing is such a vast oh, topic. Yeah. Like I said, literally, that's something you take weeks talking talking about marketing. Reason marketing, and, so <laughs> yeah, yeah. And I think the important step there is to right to learn what may suit you the best. And the important thing to realize is you got to go out and get the people because sitting there waiting for people to come in is not going to happen. You got to whatever your system is, whatever works for you, and it may take a little figuring out. You got to go out there and 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 work through your marketing steps and and. Uh, and do what you do on that front. And as far as mm -hmm. systems, what do you have in mind here when you're talking about business maintenance and, and, so and systems? when I say systems, so personally I use 17 hats. Um, I use Canva for a lot of my design. I use Photoshop. Gotcha. It's like, what are the programs mm -hmm. and the pieces and parts that are going to make all of this run smoothly? 
Um, I think there was many years in there that I was like trying everything and like didn't necessarily have a good workflow and didn't have like, okay, you know, I do the shoot, I download the images right after the shoot. On that day, I send the client a referral voucher with a sneak peek of her photos. I call my images right after the shoot. I send them to my editor. He edits them. They come back to me. I use exposure to um, do my color grading and any final edits. Like there's definitely a system and a workflow to what my process is. And you have to have that in order. If you're dealing with thousands and thousands of photos every year, you have to have some sort of structure in place that's going to allow you to do that. And figuring out what that looks like is, I feel like, really, really important. Otherwise, you're just like, all over the yeah. place. No, and you want to make sure that not take exactly. over your life. And that's what's important, whether it's the marketing or whatever, your customer management system. Canva is good for making little yeah. graphics. You you need all these little tools to give you more free time so you don't exactly. go crazy. Exactly. Anyway. Right. <laughs> but that's about that's right. Right. But it helps make you keep you sane longer, maybe, exactly. too to go ahead and, and, and do that. And then you have business practices too. And I'm guessing you mean just your set of rules or, or client rule or how you're going to operate. What do you yeah. mean by practices? Like what are your, um, All of yeah, these? like what's, what's your, like if somebody wants you to shoot, um, something that is like beyond your comfort zone, what are, gotcha. you, yeah. what are your policies and procedures in place? What happens if somebody doesn't, canceled on you like the day before exactly, stuff like that exactly. how do you deal right. with any given situation that's going to come up in business because every single business out there has um sort of a policy and a procedure around how to deal with like right. a loss or you know in terms of financial loss or right. things like that like right. how what are your what are your lines in the sand what are you willing to do what are you not willing to do how do you deal with it if this happens how do you deal with it if that happens and by this point you will have had enough things happen in your business, meaning somebody won't pay you or somebody, you know, like how do you do all those things? Right. You'll, you'll encounter these because often people won't know about these things or think about it until the first right. time it happens, like the night before of a photo shoot. And then someone calls you and eh, I don't really feel like going yeah. tomorrow. And you have a big deposit there. It's like, how, how do you do deal you? with that? Right. Exactly. You know? well, our policy right. so, is that you yeah. still pay your session fee and you can come back another time. Like, you know, how do you deal yeah. with it? Exactly. Right. So having these, and that makes, that's common sense because that's one of those things until the last minute until you run into the situation. And if you don't know, and you know, you don't want to upset people or, you know, that should all be in your portrait agreement and stuff like that. So that is, we'll have all these everyday type of things that you may not think of until you're in the middle mm -hmm. of it. And then that way you'll be prepared uh, when you encounter someone that pops up with one of these kind of issues and, and, and so forth in there. And the last phase, business growth and development, mm -hmm. and you have in there, I guess, turning into a high-end business, managing money, your your community, employees, and personal vision. And, and next, I guess when we're at this step, walking up this ladder, you've been operating for a while, you've got everything under control, you know, you, you know what's going on, and you're sitting back and saying to yourself, hmm, I wonder if there's more. Sounds like to me, these are steps where you're going to sit down and make a definitive decision. All right, I've been living here and I want to raise my income to this next level or see what, what, what is further. And as far as high-end business, now that could be different things to different people. But what tends to happen, especially in time-intensive businesses, you like what I do, what you do, and, or you know, when you're spending a lot of, you may realize you want to work with fewer people, but still keep the same amount of money or, or grow more money. And then at some point you may consider becoming a high-end business. And what does that mean to you? Or what are you, are you advising people when they, they want to be a high-end business there once they're established and once they've sort of got a right. good foothold of what's right. going on? So I, you know, I would definitely consider my, what I offer a boutique business. It's a high-end boutique business, mm -hmm. meaning that for me, when people come to me, when my clients come to me, they're spending thousands of dollars. So they're not spending, like you said earlier, this is not a separate. 35 yeah. bucks. <laughs> I mean, my, my 35 bucks is no go with yeah. Antarctica, man. <laughs> exactly. So people are spending a, a lot of money when they come to me. And so how do I offer um, that value in, in the service I provide? Mm -hmm. What does that look like? And, you know, there are certainly photographers that make more money than I do. And there are photographers that make less than I do. And really it's, 
what are you able to offer your clients? And it's all, it's little things too. It's, you know, do you have snacks? Like when people come in, I always serve champagne when I come in for, you know, when my clients come in for their shoot, they, if it's in the morning, we make mimosas. If it's in the afternoon, they get champagne. You know, we've got, um, Great. Thank yeah. you. <laughs> depending on the time of day, sometimes I'll get lunch for everybody. If it's a shoot that's right. going to go a little bit longer. You know, we have candles, like the studio's clean. We Everything in my studio is chandeliers and white and it's pretty. And, you know, it's so how do you offer that Land Rover level of service versus the Toyota level of service? You know, it, and, it, and a lot of that is figuring out what it is that you, how do you want to be treated? What do you like what are the things that you like, you know, sending them thank yous in the mail, sending them, you know, a gift voucher for a, a free shoot for them in the future. It's these little details that allow you to offer a higher level of service rather than just the like everyday, you know, shoot and burn photographer. It doesn't matter. Right. Because there may be some people who have to change some of the things the way that they're doing. And if they're saying to you, Arnica, I want to make 3500 right. bucks, you know, and you would sit down and say, well, got to make a few changes, you know, so people don't realize that their brand, it needs to be in alignment with what they were doing. And, and, and a good example, like you said, that is, is automobiles, you know, Land Rover, Range Rover. If you're going to get a new, uh, you know, Land Rover and you're paying $110,000 for that car, you know, you can't walk in and say, well, down the street at Toyota, their cars are only 22,000. If you want me to buy your Land Rover, you're going to give it to me. You know, it, it, people don't, they understand that there are differences. They understand what they're paying for and why there is, you know, no one has that kind of argument. So you have to position yourself in that space as a photographer, which is tricky because photographers don't have millions of dollars for branding and marketing like these big companies do. So people understand that there is something different and why they're willing to spend that money with you. And they see that value and they could see what they're getting for that. And there's a lot of things that sort of have to be changed in some businesses in order for it to become that Land Rover and not the, not that there's anything wrong with Toyota. Right. They're all cars. They're all going to get to the grocery store, <laughs> yep. you know? Um, but, so that is is less of an issue for people making those decisions. And yeah, I like this. This is what I want to do. And then, you know, selling your business in that manner, which is tricky. You agree with me. It's it's not so it's straightforward. It's not straightforward. And, and I think, too, yeah. a lot of what you're showing on your social media and stuff, because we've got access to mm -hmm. these free platforms right now, what you're showing on your social media also comes into play with that. Like, yeah. Don't be sh like, if you want to charge $3,000 for a photo shoot, don't be showing your behind the scenes in like, you know, the bathroom of a tiny little apartment at your friend's house. Like yeah. find yourself a studio space, rent a hotel room for a day, invest in creating content that reflects the dollar amount that you want people to spend with you. Right. And, and it's not as hard as it, you know, it's not as hard as it seems. Like you can create content and put it out there with not having that. Go to a cool hotel, go film in a lobby. Like it just is dependent. That's the, you know, the catch 22 with social media is like, we can create whatever we want. And I'm not saying lie, don't lie, but you have to somehow figure out how to elevate yourself until you can get to that point of where that is what you offer. Yeah. And I think it, it is helpful always for someone to help because I always say it's like the old dusty plant syndrome. And like when I used to run, I used to work for retail come and run a lot of stores and you, you walk into these stores and people being in that store, being there all the time may not tend to notice when you first walk in, there's a plant there with a bunch of dust on it, you know, because it's there all the time. They don't see that that's and a new, a fresh perspective in there. And the first thing you walk in, you see a dirty plant or dust, you know, like, you know, and then the people are like, Oh boy, I never thought about that. Okay. So sometimes, you know, people are operating their businesses kind of, I hate to use the word like in a vacuum, but they're doing things the same way that they tend not to realize sometimes that they're doing some of these things that fresh people walking in may see and not, it may cause an incongruency with this idea that they want to sell their businesses as sort of like a, as a high end, uh, a high end uh, business. So if you want to be that Range Rover Velar, you got to right. change some things, you know, you got to get out there and, and sort of redefine your business, which is, which is a good point. And as far as employees you have on, on there too, because there may be a time, right, where you may, may need to bring people in. And uh, if that may be your goal too, to have a multi-person operation. Definitely. 
Definitely. I mean, that's a situation like employees, you don't necessarily have to have an employee like where you have somebody that comes to your studio nine to five, you know, like that. Mm. Employees can also just mean a lot outsourcing a lot of things. So outsourcing your editing, outsourcing your album design, outsourcing um, your video production, out, you know, like ha- hiring somebody that's a contract employee to do some of these things for you to free up your time to do the things that like marketing, like the things that nobody else can do except for you. Right. Right. And that's the key to free up time. So you can have more time to focus on. It's making the most of your, of your time. And you have on here about your Mm -hmm. community. Um, What's going on when you have like, as part of your business growth and develop growth, I can't even speak and development your, your community. So, you know, there is the kind of like the old adage that says you are the average of like the five people that you spend the most amount of time with. So if you look at that and you look in your, at your life, you, there has to be a certain level of investment into yourself and into your business so that you can learn how to grow. My whole problem in the first half of my career was that I was spending far too much time like figuring out how to do all of these things rather than listening to somebody that had already figured it out and implementing what they were telling me. Um, Or, and I didn't have enough people around me that were kind of trying to build their own business and problem solve and figure out these things. And I'm a part of, um, I have one small mastermind group that's me and a couple of other girls that are, we talk almost daily. They're also photographers. They've also been in business about the same age, you know, same amount of time as me. We literally talk daily about, okay, I have this client. How do I deal with this? How do I, you know? And so it's that, that feedback of, continuing to move forward then I that's kind of like my inner inner circle and then I've got like the next tier out that I have a lot of education that I'm personally involved in like I think that in order to move forward we always have to be educating support care if you're like Annie Leibovitz like you still need to have education and um, ideas and community around you to move forward. Cause it's the only thing that's going to inspire you. If you're doing it by yourself, you're like bootstrapping and you're, you're making it a whole lot harder. Right, right. And it's super helpful because you can bounce ideas off people. If you know, they're trusted people and everybody can help each other move forward. So that is, you know, to get in with, with a community like that or build one or find one locally or, or get one in somebody. Yeah. That's a, a super valuable thing to do there. And as far as personal vision, what did you have in mind when it's, when it's personal personal vision vision is like, where do you want to go next? Are you a person that for me, part of my personal vision is teaching photography, doing education for people to help them move faster than I did. Um, Part of my personal vision is in the younger part of my career, I did a lot of humanitarian documentary work for like underprivileged places, those kinds of things. Um, and I can't do that right now because I have a three-year-old, but one of the things that I'm working on is I have, I'm working on a nonprofit organization for photographing, um, moms that get pregnant as a teen and they decide to keep their babies. So how do I give portraits to, um, you know, how do I do a portrait shoot for them? Because, their pregnancy experience is no less valuable than like a mom that has $3,000 in the bank to, to get a portrait, you know, to get her portraits done. Neither one is more valuable. Um, so that's just a personal vision of mine that I'm working on. So how do we take our skills and now that we've kind of got this basic business established and we're making money and yeah, you're always going to run into problems, but how do we grow that? And what are, what are we looking at past just the the basic the business part of it so expanding into doing something maybe better a bigger for yourself or for the community or, or keep on right. looking and out there to, to be your to money focused maybe you want to start buying real estate maybe mm. you i mean whatever yeah. it is for you you know moving forward in that and not being a stagnant person because we always need to be growing without vision we perish so you have to have something bigger than just you yeah. makes yeah. sense yeah. And that's, uh, that's an important, um, step there. And these are just very five smart things, five smart steps. And 
as you mentioned, this comes from benefit of experience and knowledge of you and and going through this. And it's not, it's not super obvious for people necessarily just starting and and knowing that ladder or where to start or, or, and where to go. So we'll make this available. And there's a few more things and we didn't cover every single thing on, on, on the list. We went over view some of the, the topics there, but we'll make that available for everybody to, to look and review and, we covered like 80 bazillion, like this was like a lot of information <laughs> Sorry. On today. But no, good thing I stretched out. But you can make this into two podcasts. No. We can split we can it split in, in half, part one, part two. We could have made, we could have made I, 10 podcasts going into all of these. Also, it would have been a whole new, know, it would have also been a, kind of a whole the new. overarching theme that covers these mm-hmm. five phases of just becoming an artist, you know, being an artist. And that's another section of this that I don't have on there, but just like, how do you develop your art? How do you develop who you are as a human being and your eye to see things and creating art for yourself and not just for your client too. So. Yeah. And it's, it's one of the things that people don't realize how much there is going on. If they step up and they do decide they want to become a photographer, it's much more involved than, they, they think at first and you're right. And I've mentioned this before today, you know, people have a lot of avenues they can turn to for assistance. Whereas 10 years ago, 15 years ago, you, there wasn't a YouTube, you didn't have all these trainings, you kind of like trial by fire, you figured it out or, or you, or you didn't. So yeah, taking advantage of these. And I always say, and someone getting hooked up with you and in, in one of your classes, which we're going to talk about shortly can cut years off and a lot of pain off somebody. And if they're really serious about it, it's definitely something worthy of taking advantage of um, where they can benefit from this and talking one-on-one or, or taking these classes and not have to struggle along the way. And as you mentioned, you, you really become that person's kind of part of their community, yep. you know, as, as someone's relying on you and, and so forth. So, so it's well, well, well worth it. And something I wish I had, right. you know, a long time ago. And like you said, maybe that's why a little bit of this is to make things easier for people to, to, you know, to, to get started. And you have a couple opportunities out there for people to take advantage of. And I know we talked about earlier, the white um, outfit, the, 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 those courses were, and then your educational platforms. So I want to give you a minute to talk about what you have available for these people, where they can yeah. find these these options for them and, and take advantage of yeah, it. Yeah, so I do, um, the easiest place kind of to start, obviously, is on Instagram. And I have, on Instagram, you can go to Natural Light Portrait Studio, and just all one word, Natural Light Portrait Studio. And that, I, on Instagram, I go live every Friday. I do a kind of a teaching, like generally, it's in, you know, 30 to minutes to an hour and we talk about all kind of all kinds of different things um i post photos there with um sort of behind the scenes stuff lighting diagrams those things from there you can go to the natural light portrait studio.com i know it's a long url but <laughs> it's, it's all right um so it's the natural light portrait studio make sure you use the because natural light portrait studio will take you to something else um And from there, I've got my classes, my individual classes that I sell, like the white on white one. I'm working on a boudoir studio one. Mm. Um, I've got a blog. And then I also have the uh, Natural Light Portal Studio community. So that is a monthly membership. It is, um, you can do a year, a quarter, or a month. And um, it ranges from $39 to $3.99. So... That is just a place that I go in and I basically teach you how to do all of these things. So I'll teach you my workflow and my editing. Um, I do a video, like a a computer video, meaning an editing workflow, those kinds of things every Tuesday. I put one up in the membership. And then on Thursdays, we go live and I do a shoot or we do a QA. and a and I'm just really there to teach you the steps of all of these things and to answer questions. We also have a community within the website. And then we also have a Facebook group that I go live in and answer questions. And um, so there's a lot going on. Lot yeah, going you have on. a lot on your website. There's a courses, workshops, yeah. mentoring, you know, your, your resources. So uh, it looks like you're yeah. involved in, <laughs> in, in that. So. I think the thing is too, is that, when we decide to make an investment in ourselves, when we decide to build a business around this, and like you had just said a little bit ago, you know, there's so much information out there. 
when you find somebody that you feel like you're in alignment with, you like their business model, you like the way that they teach, I think the, the thing that they have to offer, whether it's me or you or, you know, whomever, is that they can, they find information for you rather than you having to go to YouTube and like sort it all out and watch this video and that video and kind of like, you know, like piecemeal things together. It's more, it's much more of a stream aligned education rather than trying to find a million different things. I'm trying to assimilate all the stuff and aggregate it on exactly. your own. Exactly. Yeah. And everybody has a little bit different way of doing things. But if you find somebody that you're like, I love their business model, I want to try to build this. Just focus on like learning as much as you can from that person. And I think that that's partly why I have all of the different, like we've got the workshops and the community and Instagram and, you know, all of the things, because I want to give as much information to people as possible to help them move forward in their journey um, and not have them have to go to like, if they like my business model and they like my work, I want to answer all their questions. I don't want it to just be like, oh, well, she showed me how to edit. And then, you know, like Tracy down the street showed me how to like use this color grading and mm. so-and-so told me how to do that. Because then, then it's not, it's not like a cohesive unit. Like I've figured out the cohesive unit if you want to run a business like mine. So let me just give you all of the information. Everything in there. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And um, that, that makes sense. And I saw you even doing some workshops. And this is a tough year for yeah, workshops. workshops yeah. for... We've kind of put the workshops on hold. I'm really, really, really hoping to do um, the workshops starting in um, starting next year. So I'm kind of like I'm putting kind of putting out feelers right now to the membership community and just saying like, okay, when do we want to come? Because I've got a beautiful studio and in Montana. I have- yeah. And that's so great, especially if you could be with somebody right there. And if you want to learn that style of work, they can, if it's not too big, you know, you one-on-one or small group and they can walk you right through everything again, that can save you so much time. It's so helpful to actually see, like, you know, have somebody just sit there and be like, okay, do this. And then you're going to get this result. And then we do it and they get the results and they're like, oh, cool. Right. They're like, oh my, I never thought I could do Yeah. Yeah. So that's good. And, and getting in there and, and you have the perfect place too. They can go right into your studio. I guess you hold that right in yep, your, right, uh, right in your, your, yeah. your building. Too. Yeah. It's fun. So hopefully we'll get back to having workshops again once, you know, but now we have online, we have everything else. And, and so there's a lot of places people can turn to you. There. So pictures are very good. Got a lot of great information. We could have done like nine shows going through all this stuff. It goes to show you, though, that there's so much to know. There's so much to learn. There's so much to cover. You can't do it in one day or one show or one video or, you know, it's an ongoing experience and you just got to start somewhere and your steps are right. You know, start with your camera basics and and take it step by step from there. Jumping too far ahead, you could really swerve and you, you may not be good in areas where you need to be because you're focused on something that isn't that important. So it's important for people to know there's a roadmap and to, to get through all this. And uh, whew, that was a lot of stuff, Arnica. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd come out and take your class. It's a long drive. Anytime, Mike, you're welcome. I've got an Airbnb. You can stay in our Airbnb. <laughs> come to that, the studio. Come out. in your big giant window in your building. I'd have to come out there when it was. Warm. I know we're starting to get chilly. It's a beautiful day today, but we're. Oh, it to be cold. Yeah, I, I'll be. I get snowed in there, and I hate the cold. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. I'm, in the- <laughs> I'm not. I'm not a good cold weather person, but you have. Looks like you have a great building there. Lots of lots of night. But that was that giant windowy thing there. Did you guys build that in there? So when I moved into this space, there was. Um, so the back side of the building is it was all garage doors and the the back is where I actually do my primary shooting around. And I had him put in like a full glass garage door. So when I moved into the space, you can kind of see it behind me. Like I've got upstairs, there's like a office up there. Then, then um, through the front is like my front office. That's where I do my viewings and, and I've got a little kitchen area and then like makeup station and everything right there. Um, but we, it was, it was just like, there wasn't even drywall up in here when we, when we moved in and I kind of designed it and said, here's what I want. And then we did the full glass panel in the garage because I knew I wanted like some big light. 
you got the best of both worlds. You can have outside light, inside light. You can go out there. And I saw you have a lot of wilderness oh, around there. Got a river the, right the, down the, behind the studio. A good, a good setup. I may have to drive out there when it's not cold and there's no right, virus. Exactly. Yeah. Stay out there. <laughs> yep. So we did it. We covered a lot of I ground know. today. And um, we get going on. And all you really got to do now is just say goodbye to everybody so we awesome. can get out of here. Yeah, thanks so much for having me. I really appreciate it. It's, I think it's always super helpful to be able to just turn on a podcast and learn something new while you're driving, you know, on to and from work. And I do it all the time. I always have something playing, always some sort of educational, something that I'm listening to, you know, whether I'm like, you know, just editing or driving or whatever I'm doing. I'm always me too. And it's one of those great things that right? didn't exist I know, it's amazing. like years ago. So it's one other avenue to take advantage of to, to learn. Right. You can put it on while I do it all the time while I'm working, I have something yeah. playing and, uh, and that's a great thing. We did so it. We did it. Thank and thanks for taking your time out today and, and coming on and uh, we're going to get out of here. <laughs> okay. Uh, thank thanks. you for having me. I appreciate it. All right.